Hello, good evening. It's Tuesday, February 20, um, January, I beg your pardon, 22nd, 2013. My name is Stephen Enti, as always. Now, the MPP decided to boycott two parliamentary by-elections in Akachi and Buem because it is in dispute with the Electoral Commission. The party's members of parliament, again, are likely to boycott vetting of minister designates appointed by the president they refer to it as declining to take part in the proceedings but the question is why and the answer is simple the party says it is not uh, it does not recognize the legitimacy of president Mahama as a duly elected president yesterday also dr charles reko brobe also known as tarzan a founding member of the mpp was appalled by the party's decision uh, on a number of issues relating to the 2012 elections, describing them as illogical and nonsensical. Today, the Supreme Court, in a 6-3 verdict, upheld the arguments in a joinder application by the NDC that it had to join the case because it sponsored, it first sponsored the president, first respondent, President John Mahama, in the elections, whose outcome the petitioners, the MPP leaders, are challenging. With this verdict, arguments for and against the substantive petition will soon begin. What are the implications for governance, true democracy, freedom, and justice? Dr. Kwesi John, a senior research fellow, Institute of Democratic Governance, will share his thoughts with us on phone. In the studio tonight, to help us to understand both facets of the arguments relating to uh, the election petitions and matters arising are uh, to my immediate left honorable dominique nitu who is mpp mp for bimbela is also deputy minority leader in parliament next to him i have comfortably seated honorable alhaji inusa fosain NDC MP for Tamale Central and Minister Designate for Lands and Natural Resources. My name is Stephen Enti, as always, <coughs> and you can send your views and comments to our Facebook or facebook.com slash joynews on TV. You may also follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter handle is joynews on TV, and you can send us text via short code 1760 or WhatsApp on uh, 0544334722. Gentlemen, it's great to have you in the studios. Thank you, Mr. Ben. Honorable Fuseni, it's, it's an order to say congratulations, although you still have to wait for uh, parliamentary vetting, right? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so very much. There have been many who have uh, made references <coughs> to the fact that uh, a lot of the positions in the, the appointments have been job for the boys, really. Six or so uh, ministers of state at the presidency. What is that for? Well, uh, uh, thank you so very much. Uh, the president has clearly indicated what exactly he wants these six <coughs> ministers of state to do at the presidency. Uh, the president is running the government that uh, promised to deliver to the people of Ghana based on the NDC's manifesto. Mm -hmm. I mean, the president will put in all mechanisms and institutions that will ensure that will meet the legitimate and reasonable expectations of the people of Ghana. And that will mean that putting in place, I mean, systems that will ensure that the goals are delivered. It's about deliverables. And if that means that getting people to perform specific tasks to be able to deliver by 2016, then so be it. So you think that the president's nominations, both for the first, second, third, and fourth batches, are absolutely spot on? The, pre the president clearly, even in the, in the appointment of ministers of state, have clearly designated their areas of responsibility. That clearly shows you mm. that the president expects that they do work. And uh, Rashid Purple has been swapped. I mean, it does appear following pressures mm. from the creative arts industry, some outspoken people from the creative arts, the president suddenly uh, did a U-turn. Well, one will have to, to wait until the president just speaks on the matter because... We don't expect the president to speak yeah, that because is why, he has that, a legal that is mandate you, see, that's and why you don't, you don't, constitutional obligation that's, to do that's that. That's why you he don't speculate and assume because if you assume, you make an ass of yourself and the president. Mm, mm. You wait. It's the man and he, uh, he has absolute responsibility under Article 57 and 58 of the Constitution. Mm. Executive power resides in him. He decides what... He's a grandmaster. He decides where to put the ch a, a, a chair species, and, and so he decides to move them where he wants. And you can question that. 
Mm. Because at the end of the day, he is ultimately accountable to the people. And being so, he must be mindful of where he puts people. Right. So, um, Honorable Nitu, it's great to have you here also. Uh, the MPP, the MPP, I'm not sure how to put it, but you have described it as declining to take part in the vetting processes. So when we look at batch one, two, three, and four, are you content with the people that the president is choosing to lead his, his government in the first place? I'm asking this question in, in, on the back of the fact that I know your, your party's position, um, that you have a case against the EC and you're questioning the legitimacy of the president, etc. But... I mean, we need to form a government. I know. I'm, I'm happy that you are asking these questions with, with the knowledge at the back of your mind that I'll be speaking with my friends and speaking on these nominations. Uh, we'll be grateful with, if you could with, speak up a bit. With the notion that mm. in a very short while, things may be changing. So as I speak, I speak also with the notion that the Constitution gives him the right to do what he's doing for now. Mm. And we hope that by the day, the time the Supreme Court will do these, these things, these things will change. But I'll speak within the period that they'll be in office. And it doesn't matter when, but the period that they'll be in office. I think that the, the minister or designate obviously cannot criticize the president or can, would say what he's saying. But yeah, we all don't people, that, right? people who are like me and other people who really stand nothing to lose would do that. I think the president is caving to, to pressure too, too early. One, the Western region issue, when some chiefs came out clearly to, to say that, look, we want a son of the region to be the minister in charge of energy and oil and natural uh, oil and petroleum. And by the close of the day, that list came out. It gave others the impression that, well, if it did the same thing, you could get it. Then this issue of the Tamale boys came out. It could be a coincidence, but this coincidence it's just too, it's too, much, much, it's of too much of a coincidence to be us. taking as coincidence. Then you nominate a minister designate for a position. For no reason, people come out to say, well, we want one of our own to be in charge of culture, creative arts, and that, that industry, and tourism. and tourism, that industry. Then suddenly there's a huge change. Obviously, anybody who is outside that cycle will without any explanation, we say that, well, you are caving into pressure. But it does, and that's also, the way I'm going to it say does it. also indicate that the president is listening. You know, I there, mean, there's nothing there's, wrong there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into picking an individual for your position. Mm. You, you don't just pick him just like that. That's how I, presidents find it very difficult to make changes uh, or make you turn the way he's going about things. If you do that, some people will tag you to be indecisive, and I don't hope that he wants to start his presidency with that kind of thing or that kind of tag. I hope so. That's why I'm saying that you should be careful that people don't tag him like that. You see, these coincidences are things that you should be very careful about, first, second, third. You know, if it were just for once, maybe somebody will forgive him. But when it happens the first time, the second time, the third time, many people will begin to read a lot of things into it, and I'm not comfortable with that one. But otherwise, he has given us the people he believes can help him govern for the short time that he will be there. And we'll be looking at each of the persons, their strengths and their weaknesses. There are question marks uh, on many of them, especially those who haven't gone through the vetting before. Mm. There are a lot of question marks on many, many people. But at the end of You're the not, day... We are not willing to raise these oh, question I, marks I will not raise and perhaps it for now. point the particular individuals if, who, if, if I was vetting, who you're referring If to, I were yeah. vetting, for example, I could decide to hold it to my chest, for example. Uh, but I'm not vetting. I would have asked the education minister, for example, whether she has an NDC card. Is she an NDC member? Then I'll move from there to but other questions. But is it important? Is it relevant <clears throat> if you are appointed a minister to have a party card, really? The is that the direction we will be towing if no. we're only bringing people who belong to our party into governance? No, the relevance about her case is, is a unique situation where she was a moderator during the presidential uh, contest. You can understand. IEA was were looking for people who were really not political animals, not party card bearing people, people who were really uh, seen to be party people. So that's this that's that's so a context under which had, no, that's what? a context under okay. which I was asking. Okay, I, I, I may not get a chance to ask that mm -hmm. that question, but I would have asked it anyway. But there are so many other people who would have asked questions. Uh, or you, Lita, for example, want to know whether she still believes that the gays have rights, for example, and whether she believes that in Ghana 
man and woman, a man and a woman should enter into a relationship. Now she's minister for social protection, right? So we want to ask that kind of question. We want to find out whether she's, if there's lesbianism in the universities, for example, or the training colleges, or even on the streets, or even at social gatherings, whether she will feel comfortable as a minister for social protection, she will want to do that. There are so many things that people would have But it would have been know. great if you went to this <laughs> vetting to put this question to, to no, her, but you are not going, right? Those, those questions will come anyway along the line because uh, as members of parliament, we have the opportunity to ask these questions on the floor of parliament. Those questions will come along the line, though. But it have been great for us to have. But of course, as a party, we have this principle, and we all obey that principle. It doesn't matter what you as a person believe or what you as a person think, but you have your principle, and you want to believe in that principle. But I think he has brought out his list. Let's look at that list. Let's see what they can do. Are there people who can help him achieve what he says to achieve within the time he'll be president? Mm. Let's, let's, let's all look at it and see exactly whether there are people. Uh, who can do that. Some have proven their wealth anyway. Uh, as deputy ministers, they did well. As ministers, some did well. Some clearly have question marks on them. So we'll all look at it. And as the time goes on, these things will come up. Um, Honorable Nitu, let's, let's still stay with you and tell us, what is the position of your party? On the vetting process, you've just <coughs> explained to us on the news that you're not exactly boycotting. You are declining to take part in the process. This is like uh, throwing dust into our eyes because <laughs> it will amount to the same thing, really. Well, maybe the outcome within the first uh, phase of vetting may seem that we will not be there. And so you will think that, well, it, is, it amounts to the same thing. But there's a world of difference between boycotting the process and declining to participate in the process. For example, like as I said, we are declining to, uh, to participate in the process of vetting the minister that have been nominated or any other minister that will be nominated within the period that the Supreme Court will rule, until such a time that the Supreme Court will rule. We will not uh, do that. But if the president were to, for example, nominate a Supreme Court judge or any other person who will at least his presidency if the Supreme Court were to rule, would, would take part and vet that kind of person. So I said, for example, we are, we are just not vetting or we are not just engaging ourselves in acts that the president, that will cease to exist when the president is no more president by the ruling of the Supreme Court, if okay. the Supreme Court were to uphold our petition. So that's why we are not you're taking hope, part. You're really hoping Oh, for I think so. We have a very good case, extremely very good case. I tell you, otherwise we won't take it to court at all. Right. So we'll, we'll talk on the, the, the court case uh, later on in our discussion. But uh, Honorable Fusseini, let me come to you. Uh, we know that the NDC has uh, filed nominations to contest <coughs> by-elections in Akachi and Boem, but the MPP is not. Do you think that by mere fact that the MPP is not contesting uh, perhaps makes it not good for our democracy? <laughs> well, uh, thank you so very much, Stephen Ante. Now, listening to my brother and friend, a colleague at Parliament, I, I, I get a sense that he's bemoaning the absence of the NDC from the I mean, uh, vetting process and is actually fighting here to be able to uh, put questions across. Which questions he thought he would have been able to put across <laughs> the parliament. I mean, there was no point in, in excluding themselves okay. from this process and, and come to TV and bemoan the exclusion. Look, uh, Roko Brobi says this is illogical nonsense. Because even here, we, are, we, are, we have been told that this is not a boycott. This is an election to exclude oneself from a process. Then assuming and speculating that in future the president will make appointments, which appointments will be to institutions which will outlive the term of the president. This is an assumption. This is an assumption. What about if it, within the term the president doesn't make such appointments? You will have an opportunity. Appointment committee's jurisdiction is raised when an appointment is made consequent to Article 71. Which appointments require that an appointment committee of parliament vet that nominee because the constitution stipulates that two institutions must be responsible for the recruitment of that person into public office the executive and the legislature. In this case, the executive, the, the executive has performed <coughs> its functions under the constitution, and one side of parliament is choosing an option to exclude itself from the performance of a legitimate responsibility vested in it by the Constitution. That is their, their beef, their cup of tea. 
and they can continue to engage themselves in this exercise in futility that trying to confuse and con I mean, Ghanaians about what they stand for. Look at the, the absolute illegality, I mean, Ill, 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 Ill logic in the, in the boycott of the Akachi and Grim elections. You think there's 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 no Absolutely. logic in Look, that? First, I mean, but the, the MPP is giving reason. The reason is that um, mm. it's it's it has a case. It's it's contesting the by <coughs> the elections results with the EC. So I mean, that's good grounds for for them not to not to take part. Contesting the general elections with the EC, not the by election. What has necessitated the general elections? What has and, and it's clear they go further to say that Akachi. And we are part of the areas, our constituencies, that they are challenging the validity of those elections. That's what they go further to say. Mm. Now, Akachi produced a member of parliament in the person of Do Ajaho. On the seventh day of January of this year, Do Ajaho vacated that seat. The elections for the purposes of electing a member of parliament for that constituency is now over. It has nothing to do with the previous one. It has nothing. Buem, Buem is one constituency that they say that the election of the MP then, late Fort Kamal, has an, a matter of challenge because they believe that the votes in the Buem constituency also went some way into founding their case in court. Buem, Buem, the MP, they never, they never said that they were challenging the, the results of the parliamentary election. And assuming but not admitting that you think that in both Akachi and Buem, you ought to have performed better than the EC credited with you with. What is better opportunity do you have to demonstrate that? In a by-election. In any case, even if you go to court and the court says that the elections in Akachi and Buem were so tampered with irregularities <clears throat> that the the integrity of the elections in those days, in those two in these two constituencies cannot be vouched for. And so there must be a re-election or a rerun. Will do Ajahu come to contest the election for you to declare invalid before another candidate? It so you feel not, that I mean the MPP just, has a lot is, of advantages just, no. and to have contested the those N two. N right. NPP actually from N dispassionate observer who believes in the democracy of this country will come to understand that probably the MPP is deriding itself into thinking that it has the 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 the, the right okay to determine the rules that should govern elections in this country and to mark any contestant any person taking part in elections in this country based on their set rules. As less uh, credible. Well, um, and, and that in, 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 in any case, if those, if the, those persons contesting elections do not pass the rules that they have set, then the elections well, I, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. I've been, I've been told that Dr. Kwesi Jonah, who is a senior research fellow at IDEG, is on the phone line now to speak with us on these uh, political developments. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us on PM Express. Thank you. You must be seeing the political climate uh, with a certain spectacle, I guess. One from the Supreme Court uh, joined a rule and from the MPP's decision to boycott the by-elections in Buem and Akachi and also what appears to be its decision to, to decline to take part in the vetting process of the minister-designates appointed by the president. What are your observations and comments about all of these? Hello. Yeah, Dr. Jonah, did you hear me? No, I didn't. Well, I'm saying that you must be watching the political landscape with some excitement. I mean, with all yeah. the Supreme Court issue, with the MPP's decision to boycott the by-elections in Akachi and Buem, and then with... Uh, the, what appears to be the decision to decline to take part in the vetting process of the ministers designate, you must be watching this with keen interest. Can you share your observation with us? Uh, one, first of all, 
my personal opinion is that it is not good for a major party like the New Patriotic Party to refuse to participate in very important processes precisely because their participation in those processes will benefit the people of Ghana generally. One, let us take the fighting. The people of Ghana have elected MPs to go and perform certain functions in Parliament. If the party has a case in court, they should stick to the judicial process but continue to participate in the political process until a court decision is taken. Now, at the moment, what is happening is that the people have given their mandate to the MPP, parliamentarians have taken their mandate from the people, but are taking instructions from their party. I, I don't think it is right for people to elect you to go and perform a certain function only for you to take instructions from another source, which is don't participate in the process of parliament. I don't think this is right. It is unfair to the people who elected them to go to parliament. It is not even good for the image of the party to refuse because participating in the fetching process will benefit all Ghanaians. There are issues that may be only the MPP MPs on the Veteran Committee can bring up. At the moment, if they refuse, as they have in fact decided to do, to participate in the processes of the Veteran Committee, what it means is that NDC ministerial nominees will be vetted by NDC members of the Veteran Committee. Very one sided. And the enormous contribution that MPP members, if they were present, could have made would be completely lost to the people of Ghana and to Ghana democracy. I don't think once you have taken your case to court, you can continue pursuing the case in court but participating in the other processes. I don't understand why you should just refuse to participate in crucial, crucial political processes that will be in the interest of democracy in general and the people who elected you in, in, in particular. Now, as for the, uh, 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 the, the by elections, uh, I, I, I don't seem to understand would participation in the by election in any way be prejudicial to the proceedings in court? No. Neither can the MPP say that they have lost so much confidence in the EC that they will not participate in any election. That, no, that, is not, that, that cannot be the position. So I think once you have a case in court, pursue the case in court, let the institution that is responsible for taking all the decisions do its job whilst you continue to, to, to participate in the other processes. At the moment, what they are doing is very, very unfair to the people who elected them, and what they are doing is also not very good for the party because they have enormous contribution to make to the political processes, democratic political processes of this country, which they are refusing to do. Well, Dr. Jero, I'll hold you there, and then I'll give the chance to Dominic Nitiwo to react to your statements, and then we will continue with the discussion. I'm surprised. Dr. Jonah knows very well that uh, MPs don't take instructions from party. Neither, do the part, neither does the party take instructions from members, uh, the, M, uh, the MPs. It is a consultative process. We, we, every political party, you, are, you run an election as a member of parliament and you are being sponsored by the party. So you do a lot of consultative business. And yesterday I said it, and I keep saying the same thing, that it was a consultative business. At the end of the day, we came out with the unanimous decision that for the vetting of ministers, we will not participate in it. It, is, it doesn't mean that we will not do our legislative and executive functions, or as executive uh, oversight function, we'll continue to do that. And he knows it. I have said it before, that we are going to parliament, we'll take part in the debates of, of parliament, we'll do our oversight functions of parliament, we'll do our legislative functions of parliament to satisfy our constituents. But in this particular case, we are not doing it because we are going to give legitimacy to the very issues that we are challenging in court. So I don't know why he's not understanding. He should just take that glasses that he's wearing Which glasses the glasses he, of seeing the yeah. issues from that side that he is so and you put don't our glasses with as him well. that by I your don't. continuous uh, decision to boycott selected 
procedures in Parliament, you are denying the Ghanaian who voted you into power of the benefits for which they voted you. Because he knows very well these are legitimate tools that are being used in Parliament. Non-participation, boycotts, walkout, they are legitimate tools that are in a democracy. Because look, the reverse is worse. The other side is worse. If these tools were not available, okay, then you will see what happened in other countries where people rather would take quadrants and catalysis and go onto the streets. I don't think that anybody should go that. For me, I believe that the, the tools that are available in every democracy should be what any democracy should exploit. And that's exactly what we are doing. I think that we are wrong in doing that kind of thing. I believe that we have stated our principle, and our principle is very clear. Any decision that would not last when the president ceases to be president by the decision of the Supreme Court, we will kindly decline to participate in that. But any decision that will traverse or will last beyond the president's mandate, I think that it is in the interest of the people of Ghana for it to take part. Is that I see you nodding your head. You, see, you need to make a reaction to? Shenanigans will not wash. You say any decision that would outlast the president. You want ministers of state. You, they are going to, ministers of state have been nominated for certain particular portfolios in this country. When they are sworn into office, they will take decisions that would outlive any, any president, even assuming, but not admitting, that a different decision emanates from the court. The decisions that will touch and concern your lives, the lives of your children and children's children. So what kind of shenanigans are you talking about? Are you looking just at the person or what decisions you will take in office as a minister? No, when you take a decision, are you are you going what to be are you a talking about? No, you are going to be a minister, for example. When I'm going to be a minister, I'm so, going to So take when you decisions. bring a bill, excuse no. me, when you bring a bill to parliament, we have said that bill will at last you. Because if uh, President Mohammed is going today, you will go with him, but that bill stays. So we'll debate that bill. I don't know why you so, don't get that. So is that, saying is that, that so, the point you think the, he is that's making? The, exactly the point. You are saying that the person who has been nominated to take the, those decisions, you are not going to participate in determining whether or not he's otherwise fit. He's a fit and proper person to occupy that position. That is not your concern. It is when he gets there that he takes decisions. And which decisions you think we can reject might even or come to parliament? No, we can reject or, or we can reject those decisions or we can support those decisions. What, it what is I'm our, saying it is, is that you are just saying that by no. legis legislative decisions and policy decisions that might make it to parliament. You are forgetting, you are excluding many things. You are talking about legislative decisions that might make it to parliament or policy decisions that might make it to parliament. But that person that you are excluding yourself voluntarily from deciding whether or not he takes that position might make other decisions that will not come to parliament. You don't care about that. Dr. Jenner, if you're, 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 if you're still on the line, does it, does it appear that we are on the same page on this, this one? Who and who are on the same page? Uh, the MPP and the NDC on the position of taking part in legislative processes in parliament or not. No, I think I want to emphasize again that I totally disagree with this refusal to participate in parliamentary processes. Look, my good friend, Honorable Mitiwo, is saying that they will refuse to take part in any decision or any process which could be necessary by a court decision. Now, listen. If you take a case to court, you either win or you lose. If the MPP should win, and this is where their calculations are, if they should win, the ministers who are going to be vetted will go with His Excellency John Kamani Muhammad. They should look at the other side too. If they go and they lose, they would have lost the opportunity to critically examine nominees, please some nominees. Don't just, don't just look at the probability of you winning. In the event that you lose the case, you would already have forfeited the opportunity to scrutinize the president's ministerial nominees to the best of your ability. But these are the people who will then be taking decisions for you.
and you should be bearing the you should be bearing the consequences of bad governance if there are any. I don't think this is right, and we should not carry party at the one of these to this level. Well, Dr. General, you know, we'll take a quick but, break, but and let me, when we let turn, me, I'll give you... Yeah. Let, me, let me point out something yeah. to him. He just said that Article 57, 58 clearly states that the executive authority is vested in the president. What the president will simply do is that he is the executive. That is the, our constitution. What the president will simply do is to delegate that authority to people who are then termed as ministers to do the work for him. This is the person you are challenging that his validity as president. Okay? Then you are going to sit and vet the very people who you the very people who you think should not be sitting down there. But, but, does it does not make your case moot? The principle does not make your case moot. The principle looks to me. I can get it. You can get it. I can get it because you have an issue with the legitimacy of the man. There is then no you are issue won the election. There's no issue with the legitimacy the of the president. No, but that's for the no, court. That's there is for an the issue court with the decide. election of the mm. president. You are getting this wrong. <laughs> there is no issue as far as the laws and the constitution of this country is concerned. There is no issue about the legitimacy of the president of Ghana. It is there is an issue about the election that are, of the president. Yeah. Because the constitution provides a framework and says... When there is a successful challenge to the election of a president, ask that the president would have done well in office. In the, in the meantime, the, the status man is, quo is the man is so warm up that he's well, we'll he's throwing it around. We're not getting it correct. We'll be right back to discuss more. You can send us your <laughs> comments, uh, <laughs> post them on our Facebook or facebook.com slash join us on TV, or you can send us text 1760. We'll be right back. Welcome back to PM Express. You can join us, text 1760, post your Facebook comments on our Facebook or facebook.com slash joynews on TV. You can also send us uh, a tweet. Uh, our handle is joynews on TV. And you can also WhatsApp us on our WhatsApp number 054433 uh, You can WhatsApp us on that number. We're still discussing the matters arising from um, the by-election issues in, in, in Akachi and Boem and then uh, President's appointment. So, Dr. Jonah, I'll come back to you on the telephone. We left on the note where you were saying that uh, in the event that the MPP loses the Supreme Court petition, it means that if it did not take part in the vetting of the president's appointees then if there were you didn't say that expressly but the implication is that if there are uh, bad governance decisions the MPP then at the time should be holding itself responsible right that is the point right so dr. Jonah we we, we we listen to all of these arguments and the question I want to ask is that when we look at the uh, boycott in Akachi and Buem, and then there's uh, the boycott of the vetting, which we've we've discussed extensively. What signal do you think that these boycotts are sending to one the electoral commission, the MPP supporters, and the NDC supporters, and the general populace at large? I don't think I quite. Right. Let me let me rephrase the question again. The MPP's boycotts. Do you think that this is sending any negative or positive signals to the political environment and people within it? No. Um, this it is not. It is um, the MPP itself, um, which is shooting itself in the foot. Look, these two constituencies. You know that under any circumstance, the NDC could capture the seats without any worry at all. But what is good? If the, what would be good if the NDP decided to participate is that it gives you the opportunity to mobilize whatever few supporters uh, you have. You, everybody knows that you're not going to win the Akati seats. But the MPP supporters in the Akati constituency are then mobilized to um, <coughs> rally around their candidates. Uh, their spirits are high. They keep the party flag flying and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter whether you get 10% or 12%. But it becomes a, the, the election, the by-election itself then becomes a rallying point for the MPP 
CPP to do some kind of mobilization in that constituency. You know that the NDC will capture uh, capture the NDC will capture well, but it offers an excellent opportunity to put your mobilization clause into play to rally support around, around the NPP flag and let the, your supporters in those constituencies feel that yeah we are contributing towards the NPP cause. Now, without the NPP in, in, in these two by elections, it's like a single party election for the NDC. So I, 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 I don't really see how simply refusing to participate in the by elections in these two uh, uh, NDC dominated constituencies could help them legitimize any, 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 any party or any party. So please, when we take decisions as politicians, we should look at all sides of the problem. We, we, we shouldn't you know, be one-sided. We should, look, we should even ask ourselves, what is the consequence? For the particular action that we are going to take for the political future of our party. But it doesn't look to me that we are looking at all sides of the problem, that a certain line has been uh, decided and everybody is trying to throw the line, whether or not, uh, 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 in the minds of other people, the majority of the people, it makes sense or not. Thank you very much, Dr. Kwesi Jonah is a senior research fellow at IDEC. We are grateful for your time. So, uh, back into the studio. I'll give you, I'll give you um, honorable... Uh, I never got the opportunity to talk about the by-elections. I think that, let me say something yeah, very, sure. very shortly, that the decision not to go for by-election has been espoused already by the party, very clearly, that, look, you have a referee that, uh, uh, that was supposed to have a fair take on has caught a call. Unfortunately, Accra has of have an issue with the referee. That same referee is supposed to go and be the referee between Olympics and Accra has of folk. You think that Accra has of folk will go into that match being a happy uh, team when they are saying that you did not fairly uh, conduct the first match? You are obviously, especially because the case is in court, you are obviously going to rescue yourself from participating in that process until the court determines otherwise. So it's a very straightforward thing. And I don't know why Dr. Kochi Jonah is not getting the principle. It's a principle that MPP has espoused, and he's taken religiously to that principle that, look, we've taken this case to court. Oh. The case... <clears throat> a principle which Dr. Jonah says yes, the you're case shooting itself. yourself I tell you, fault. you know why? No, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. The case, if today, the letter, com the, if today the, the courts were to agree in any form that, yes, there was fraud, whichever form that it is, the image... And the image of the letter commission will not be the same image that we have today. It's obvious, okay? It's obvious that it will not be the same. Unless the court says that, look, MPP, you don't have a case, we throw it out. That's as simple. So for me, Dr. Kozi Jonah should look at the other side of, put the, the shoe on the other foot and find out himself. Whether if, for example, he had been sitting in an MPP meeting and have this case in court. He would say, okay, there's no problem. Though we have an issue with the letter commission, they are the same referees. Let's go in for the elections. And then we will feel free, we'll be laughing. Then why are you taking them to court in the first place? Why are you saying that those <clears throat> 4,000 to 6,000 police stations they did not conduct the elections well and you were cheated? Why are you saying that by their act and commissions, your candidate lost out? Why are you saying that there was fraud in the elections that they conducted? You are. If at the end of the day, the elections, the, the courts rule in any form, if they uphold any session of the, the petitions that have been sent by the MPP, the, 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 the electoral commission will not be the same electoral commission that we have today because there will be serious questions that will be asked about them. So people should look at it from the other side as well and find out whether exactly MPP took the right decision. Because look, like I said before, we did not just sit and take that decision like that. We consulted the rank and file of the party. And I can tell you that the over 5 million Ghanaians that voted for the NPP are extremely excited about what we are doing. Take it for me. Because we have calmed them down. We have said, look, we don't want any violence. We don't want the Kenya style. We don't want the Liberian style. We don't want the Ugandan and uh, Sierra Leone style. We want to take the matter to court. So you calm down. We will do what you want. And these things, that these simple gestures that we are giving to them are exciting them. It's keeping them united. It's keeping them where they are so that it doesn't explode. I think that, like I said before, the reverse is not good for us as a nation. Let these legitimate tools be used to prosecute whatever we are doing. After the Supreme Court has ruled, and I hope that it's early enough 
all this will be gone. I don't if for saying if we win, 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 tools. That's what the NPP is let using. Me tell you, something. you don't see it that way. Steve Ante, I'm telling you as a matter of fact that the idiosyncrasies of the leadership of the MPP is I blinding think, them no, I think you to should. the illogic. I, I think I should no, remove when those I say words. You are, you are, no, no, when you say, when you say idiot, idiosyncrasy, what, what, idiosyncrasy what exactly do you want They are thinking, they are feeling, they are assessment. That's a word in English, idiosyncrasy. It's, it's not being no, an idiot. What, what I mean is, what I mean is, what I'm saying that, what exactly is your words is I'm saying that, listen to me. I'm saying that, go check it. I mean, this, I'm not, I'm not looking at the idiosyncrasies The idiosyncrasies of the leadership of the MPP is closing their eyes. It's blinding them to the illogicalities in their thinking and reasoning. And that is leading them to self-strangulation. You see, because I tell you as a matter of fact, people are going to inquire and probe further into the logic that you are espousing today. I don't have a problem. Today, let me tell you, that you don't have a problem. That's why you are pursuing that line. Today, you are saying that you have a problem with a referee. You've gone to court to say that the referee's officiating of the, of the game, of the match, was said that you were had, had, I mean, hardly done by. By the, by but the that's referee. fair. But you were in that no, position. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, you would take the same stance. Let me my argument. Okay. And you understand. And you see okay. the illogic in the reasoning. Now, it, what the logical conclusion <clears> or what they are saying is that in the event that the Supreme Court holds for them, then there must be a, com a commission, a, a, an EC, that in their view will do what is right and proper in the circumstances. That will mean the constitution of an EC to pretend over whatever election that will be conducted should the ele I mean, a Supreme Court rule, rule for them. See the illogicality. That means there must be somebody, and you know the appointment of a commissioner. You know the process. <laughs> How the commissioner is appointed. You know the process. Yeah. What he goes through. Who appoints him. When the Supreme Court makes that decision and you say that the referee is so biased that you have absolutely no confidence in. But if you were in that position, what I'm saying wouldn't is that you have taken you that stance? You don't stance? go that way. You don't go and attack an institution of state that has been set out to do that. You have a problem with the elections. You go to court to lead evidence to show that the results of the election could not have been what you anticipated. Well, Honorable Fuseni, I'll take a few uh, comments from our viewers who have been sending a lot of messages. Alukus from Tamale, you say the political landscape is getting quite interesting by the day. But let me state that it is high time politicians and the citizens of the country begin to respect the status quo that regulates our character as a nation. The MPP's decision is a decision in the right direction. Tarzan should give us a break. The battle is simply the Lord's. And then Peter Tongo from Takradi. You say, can I know the number of parliamentary seats MPP have contested in court so far since the 21 days deadline has elapsed and they promised to contest about 40 seats. Uh, well, I'm not in a position to give you those details. Alukus again says the NDC rejoin, sorry, the NDC joinder is nothing but a storm in a small teacup. The hardcore evidence of the MPP will still stare them in the face. The battle remains the Lord's. And then uh, this one from uh, Dabantib from Bumkrugu says that, I think the MPP are being hypocritical and selective in their understanding of the Constitution. On one hand, they take refuge in the Constitution by going to court. And then on the other hand, they are seeking to overthrow the same Constitution by not recognizing the legitimacy of a president who was duly elected and sworn in. Do they really care about the progress of this nation? By their fruits, you shall know them. This is Dabantib from Bungurugu Nyonyo. You can send more of your text messages, uh, 1760, short code, and Facebook, facebook.com slash joinews on TV. So let's get back to the studio. Um, Honorable Nitewo, you may want to react to yes. some of the uh, closing statements. First of, of all, uh, I'm surprised that he's Honorable going Hussein. about saying what he said. Let me tell you something. If you have a, re you have a problem with a reference, you believe that by his acts and commissions, it led to you the situation in which you find yourself and you are not happy about it. And you've taken the issue to the referees commission to look at it, like the courts that we have taken the issue. I do not think that when they speak, when the courts speak, and they say that you, the referee, 
you do not act well, okay, the referee himself might, first of all, there are two things that will happen. Either the referee, in many developed countries, the referee resigns, especially if it is, if it is overwhelming and damning, or the referee reforms the, the way he goes about issues. Otherwise, the same result will come. So I don't know why you think that your assertion that, well, a new elected commissioner must come, and that's what we are thinking. That's not at all. I'm just saying that. I'm not thinking that way. I'm just giving you the logical conclusion. No, that's, your, that's not your, it. There your, are several your, conclusions. I've just uh, given you two of them. Uh, and I'm telling you that if at the end of the day the, there's any upholding up, uh, uh, of our petition at all, the EC will not be the same EC. Afarijan will not be the same Afarijan. The era around Afarijan, the, 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 not, I will use the word invisibility, the respect that he has, his own competence will be questioned by that same decision. So for me, we are looking at it and then we'll see how this this. So when you the competence of a person is questioned yeah. by the highest decision, highest abdicating authority, in which confidence vindicates your position, yeah. you think that person will still be in office? No, oh, listen to me, listen to me. That's, <laughs> so think that's, through no, your that, listen, listen to me, listen to me. Just as you said that there is a constitutional provision in going about this issue, either removal or appointing. Are you getting me right? I'm sure that when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. Because you have but not there is a, Listen, there's a constitutional provision. But I'm just pointing out to you that if this case goes this way, this is the replication, as simple as that. I don't think that MPP has done anything wrong. Any party in our position will do the same thing will do the same thing that the MPP is doing that, look, you have a problem. You are saying that you conducted elections in close to 6,000 polling stations in a way that, do not, that benefited one political party. And that led to you wrongly declaring that political party the winner of an election. I agree entirely with you. Can I make my point? Honorable Fuseng, let's make him finish. Then you can make my point. Yes. And today, the next day, that same body is mandated to go and conduct another election at Akachi and Bium. And you, the very person who has taken this matter to court, you are happy smiling and say, well, I'm going to go and contest in that election. What do you gain from it? I don't think you gain anything. In fact, you stand to lose much more if you contest than if you don't go. That's, that's your position. That's, that's yeah. my position. And the same thing with the vetting is the same, it's the same principle. MPP has stuck to one single principle that let's wait for the courts to rule. When the position is declared by the courts, then we will all move along with what the, the courts have said. Right. And, know, and then what, what our this, actions will be informed by the decision of the courts. It's as simple as that. I don't think what, that we should What I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that I agree with you to the extent that in election, you have election results. The election, the law that governs elections provides for certain standards, certain benchmarks. Yeah. That if, in your view, you think the elections did not meet those benchmarks, benchmarks. you don't attack the, 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 uh, the institution that conducted the elections. No you go to that. court. You no make a petition. petition. You go to court. To and that's attack. what we did. Oh, now you are, you are shifting the polls. You see, that's the problem. Okay, you continue. You, are shifting. Continue. you, see, you go to court to attack the process. The process that culminated into a decision. But they're petitioning, decision? and so and the process is part no, of the petition. No, the process, no, the process of voting, the process, the register, all those things. Wow. And how many people came, because it's about voting. So that's why the standard is higher. You come and show how the process was not followed through, and how, or how the process was so skewed that you didn't get a fair and accurate reflection of the decision of the people or leadership of this country. That's what you show. And when you show it convincingly and conclusively, the Supreme Court then directs the body well, to go and conduct an election that will manifest what you are saying. Well, let's, let's move the discussion forward. Uh, honorable, well, well, honorable for Nitu, us, let we me, have let me, release. Yeah. We have release. Uh, we okay. have sought some, some release. And we believe that these releases are enough to get what we are looking for. We have not gone to look at the process all over. When those reliefs have been granted, or not, or, or not granted, granted, you appear not to be looking at it. But the fact that the reliefs could be declined. Uh, listen to me. Oh, after the evidence, you know clearly that every <laughs> evidence now is on the pink mm -hmm. Those there. ones that have been given to the political parties there. Ooh. Every evidence we have is based on that particular the, one. The so there is no other, so look, in the elections, there is yeah. no other evidence other than what has been given to you by the electoral commission itself. If you bring any other evidence from outside, unless maybe you can prove with a video that there was violence and or some 
somebody stole some uh, papers or somebody was stabbing something in a police were not station. Qualified you as evidence. No, they were not qualified. Yes. The but court. you are just talking about so the plain uh, pink sheets the letter commission yeah. itself gave. And Everybody that's all that we're Let's move. Let's move the discussion just, forward. Just, um, just a brief, just a brief response. Yeah. Everybody has the blue sheets. And everybody, and everybody, everybody and, yeah, so and then, so when you go to file, that's why the electoral commission is saying that provide further and better particulars of the irregularities that occurred in your 4,700 polling stations. You don't go and give them blushes. You mention the name of the polling station. What happened? How the votes were turned out? What you think went wrong there? Not the, the blushes will come in when you go into the box to give Viva Voki evidence, mm. oral evidence, and tender those blushes. You don't hold them to your chest and say that the blushes. You don't do that. That's what the EC is telling you. Bring the evidence. Show us conclusively, and by evidential distance, that this police station had this problem, and we can respond to your petition. Honorable Nitu, let's quickly, let's quickly um, discuss the statement that was issued yeah. by uh, Tarzan. Uh, I read portions of it. It says we don't have a lot of time. It says that uh, the MPP is boycotting... Well, we'll skip that. Why not extend this illogical and nonsensical act by asking all the parties MPs in all of the constituencies affected by the 4,700 polling stations cited in a Supreme Court petition to step aside from Parliament pending the determination of the case. Let me not bore you with the details of this petition, but Riku Brobe is simply saying that some of the decisions that your party is taking is illogical and nonsensical, and this is a big guy in your party. Big guy in which party? MPP? Well, he's a, he's a founding member of I, your I, party. I just think that he should stop using those titles for him. Himself, uh, and then go down to the party and work. I think that he's seeking, he, Walker will be seeking net, nothing else by attention. I think we will ignore him as a You think party. he's courting? Oh, he's courting unnecessary attention. Publicity. Unnecessary and pu publicity. I think that if he had taken that energy in fighting for the party in 2012 elections, you could have won. I, I'm sure that would have done better in certain areas that he has influence than what he's doing now. Because I didn't hear him campaign, I didn't hear him issue statements, I didn't hear him, him talk. If he could do this, I didn't know he was around. He could do this, then maybe would have had would have fared better in other areas than we are currently doing or we have done. He should rather do that. But what is nonsensical or illogical about the decisions that the MPP has taken? That you claim you claim that the MPP should not go to court. When you have not even as you claim you are a founding member, you have not even had the courtesy to call upon those who have the evidence to say, come on, gentlemen, what evidence gentlemen, what evidence do you have? You have not done that. You have not visited the party hierarchy. You have not visited the, uh, the, those who hold onto the evidence. You have not visited the lawyers. You have not talked to anybody. And then you issue a statement saying that the party should not go to court and that we have no evidence. We should have lost the election. We should look after this system. I think he has his own peripheral ideas. Whatever his motive is, we don't know. And he's following that same principle of issuing very insulting letters to the very people that he calls founding member. Come on. So, but the party should uh, take um, it's not the same disciplinary action against him then, what if you disagree action? I think we we'll ignore him. Know. In fact, uh, the party will serve itself better if we ignore him, because I don't think that is important. You know, they say Wilco Bobby that lost the leadership of the party to J President J. Kufo and decided to form his own party. Even in the second round, when other political parties decided to support MPP, he decided to form his own political party. So you think his credibility as a supporter the of the forgiving MPP spirit of the is party, questionable? If not for the forgiving spirit of the party that after that the party forgave him and gave him one of the most juicy uh, positions that you can find in this country. Your positions were juicy? No, no, no. <laughs> Chief Executive VRA is one of the juiciest positions you can right. find in this country. Okay, the I, party um, did that. Mm. In 2010, when he lost the chairmanship, he decided to take the party on. He, he took the party to court. I, I don't think that these are people that we should deal with. Because when you are in the same party and every single time you are turning back to cut the meat of that party from the back and eat, then and you, you have think an that issue you'll be right. Well, we, we have more messages and we don't have a lot oh. of time. Uh, I'll run through some of them. My name is VI from Ho. If these results were to go in favor of the MPP and they later realized these irregularities, would they have gone that far? I think what we need to do is um, rally behind the president elect to build a better future for our dear country. If that's what we're aiming at or pursuing a better 
still let the sleeping dog lie off. We really have a, a Ghana at heart and not our selfish desire. Ekufuado is about to experience a legal torture once again. This is, uh, sorry, uh, once again from Chachu. This is from Yao uh, sending this message from Sunyai. And this one says, uh, Stephen, Dr. Brobe is not a founding member of the MPP, but rather UGM. Good evening to Honorable Dominic Nito. But uh, Steve, at the end, I want to know the number of the ministers uh, expressed and used, and then what is the next step for MPP should the Supreme Court invalidate the election results? This is coming from Roland from Saboba. And the MPP is boycotting. Will the MPP members of parliament receive salary at the end of every month? They continue uh, to parliamentary sittings. This is from Eddie in Second Takradi, and it's not the third time Woyome started by giving the president an ultimatum not to uh, appoint Okujeto and others. Uh, this one doesn't have a name. And this one here says that I think there are lots of the issues that have not been discussed and we'll be very grateful if you give us another platform to discuss them again. Well, we'll try to reschedule another program so that we could have the wherewithal and time to discuss all of this. Uh, Adamuda from Wa says, Dr. Jonah should know that the MPP sponsor their MPs and the party can give a directive to its members, including MPs, for Dr. Jonah show come again. If the MPP MPs continue to boycott parliamentary business, then I hope they will boycott their January salaries. This is from Richard from Zabella. Uh, quickly, before we go, we have just about uh, a few seconds to, okay. to uh, wrap for, up. For I, I want to touch briefly on, on uh, the, no, no, not Rekubo. Uh, is that Rekubo? <laughs> <Rekubo? laughs> no, not on Rekubo <laughs> at all. <laughs> the Supreme <laughs> Court <laughs> ruling uh, today which it's granted cool. the NDC uh, rejoinder. Do you, uh, Honorable Fosseini, see that as uh, a one-nil victory against no, no, the no, MPP? No, no, I just think not that yet. basically the Supreme Court has done what, is, what, what, what it should do in the circumstances. The party sponsored the candidate the party's interest and is this you, you think it's, the party's it's, interest is contaminous with the candidate and the party thinks that and, and holds the strong view a strong view that it should be a, a party in this matter the Supreme Court thinks that the party is a proper a, a party in this matter and has so granted the joinder and so we're hoping that in the in the hearing of the substantive case actually we're praying that the Supreme Court impanels well, uh, Honorable Fuseni, we hope that we'll get a chance on Thursday or so to discuss this again. And well, uh, for, Honorable Nitu, concluding yeah. remarks, I mm. just want to say that it is not every time that the majority's view is right. And I'm not here to denigrate the Supreme Court, mm. but the truth is that in Parliament, you can. The majority will always have its way. When well, the yeah, this, minority, we're, not, we're not surprised. I'm coming. You the, said minority, the majority view is not over, always right. That's why you're challenging the election. That while the minority can <laughs> have his say, yeah. I think yeah. that. Uh, uh, Justice Duce, for example, had given the principles of a, a joinder. And that's how come that Bafo Boni quoted Justice Duce about it and said, look, in the joinder, you gave the principle that this principle, this principle, follow that that's principle. That's why they clapped in court. Uh, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? No. Then the you, go and rule against, you go and rule against your own principles. I leave it at that place. Let the people of Ghana they judge. Clapped in well, court let the the people. So, so <laughs> let, me, let me hear from you, uh, Honorable, if we can bring you back on Thursday to, to, well, to this discuss is, this. This is an fair. interesting jurisprudential and, issue. And I so mean, you, it consolidates the democracy. Make. I mean, if I'm available, right, that's I'm going fine. To be here. And then, Honorable Nitu, we if hope I, we can I get there, you to come in. Okay, my name oh. is Stephen Enti, and we thank you for making time for with us on PM Express. Uh, join us again tomorrow for uh, Corporate Wednesday. Good night.